What is up, guys? Welcome to episode number 46 of the Sasha T Show. In today's show, we're going to talk about the current state of the sports card market and where it's at. Because I'm going to be honest, guys. If somebody told me back in January that card values would be where they're at today, with one, a global pandemic going on, unemployment at an all-time high, the stock market taking an enormous hit, and no professional sports being played, I'm going to be honest, guys, I would have thought that person was crazy, insane, wouldn't have believed them at all. I mean, it, it just wouldn't make sense in my head and probably to a lot of you guys. But the reality of the card market situation right now is that the market is strong and in some cases hotter than it has been when sports were playing before this whole pandemic. Seriously, so in some cases, the market is actually hotter and there's no sports being played. So let's break down some numbers first. I pulled some card numbers. We're going to look at them right when the pandemic hit and where the card's at right now. First off, Luka Doncic's base prism PSA 10 is currently $470, guys. March 23rd, this was a $380 card. So it's up 90 bucks since March 23rd. Trey Young's base prism PSA 10 is currently a $200 card. March 23rd, guys. That was a $140 card, $60 bump since March 23rd. This is a big one. LeBron James, Topps Chrome Rookie, PSA 10. This is 111. The card number is 111, guys. Currently, the last three sales, April 12th, one went for $6,100. April 12th, again, one went for $7,300. Now, I want to point out this is a Probstein auction. So it's a little weary. Um, I'm not going to take it as a as a full front, um, you know, comp. Uh, but it is there, Probstein Auction, April 12th, $7,300. Now, April 10th, so just two days before, this was a $5,100 card. So even if we take away the Probstein Auction, this card went up $1,000 in two days. Now, March 19th, when the pandemic hit, this card sold for $4,200. So essentially, $4,200 March 19th, and now it's currently at basically a $6,100 card. That's a $2,000 bump, guys, in just a couple weeks. So what is going on with the card market? There's no professional sports being played right now, guys. This means basically card prices are essentially going up without the player's performance affecting the market. So usually what we see, guys, Luca has a really big week, his card prices go up a percent. Trey Young has a really big week, his prices go up to extent. Lonzo Ball, Shea Gilders Alexander, on and on and on. But what we're seeing right now, guys, is prices are going up without even players playing the game of basketball. Very interesting stuff, guys. So, now the question becomes, why? Why is this happening? Why is, the car why is the market currently where it's at? And why are cards actually going up when we have a global pandemic? Unemployment at an all-time high. Stock market taking a big hit. No professional sports being played. Why is it going up? I put down a couple of reasons. I don't agree with all of them. I'm going to explain which ones I do and don't agree with. Uh, and we'll go through them. First one, unemployment checks are being dished out and people are using that money to buy cards. Makes sense, right? Maybe some, some people in the hobby, some investors lose their jobs. They don't have money for a certain point in that early March period. And now they're getting the checks in and, and they're just spending the money on cards uh, and investing in cards. I somewhat agree with that. That makes sense. I mean, it's not too far-fetched. Number two, People are stuck at home, don't really have anything to do, and they don't really have any expenses because they're not, you know, going out to the movie theater, spending money on, on clothes and, 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 you know, fast food and that sort of stuff. They're not going out with friends. 
Um, so they actually have more income than one would imagine, and they have nothing to do. So they're basically scrolling through eBay all day, and this is kind of their their fix, their their high, what what you know the fun that they have throughout the day. This is really the only thing they have. Um, so this is what they're doing. This is the only thing they can do. I w I would agree with that. I think that's what we're seeing a lot. We're seeing a lot of people getting on eBay. Um, you know, they don't they're not able to go watch NBA games. Um, maybe this is how they're getting their gambling fix in. Um, I would agree with that. Um, it, it makes sense in my head. Um, you know, just look around you guys. What, what are people doing throughout the day? You know, they're staying home doing nothing. And if they're into sports, if they're into, you know, fantasy, if they're into just sports cards in general, buying sports cards is fun. Um, and it, it, it'll get you through the day. So that, that, that to me makes sense. Next one. Card investors are sitting on equity and are bored. They don't have a lot of expenses and they're spending money right now. I don't, I, I sort of agree with this, not fully. Um, I'm an investor myself. I'm sitting on equity. I'm starting to buy, um, you know, certain cards. Um, but in a market like this, where it's actually, it's actually not a down market. I mean, maybe a couple of months ago, we would say it. a couple of weeks ago, we would, we would say it is, but right now it's not a current down market. So I wouldn't necessarily say all investors are buying up right now. Um, I wouldn't fully agree with that. Uh, I think collectors, right? Guys that maybe don't really care about certain price points of the cards they get. They're, they're mostly PC cards. That makes sense. Um, and, and if they're, you know, in a position where um, it, financially they're still doing okay, that makes sense that they're buying cards from the other point we talked about where they're just stuck at home, don't really have anything to do. Next one, guys. Since the two biggest grading companies are closed, PSA and BGS, PSA 10s and, and BGS 95s and BGS 10s are in low supply. So essentially, since there's no, you know, since we're not getting a flood of PSA 10s flooding onto the market from grading companies and BGS 95s and BGS 10s, the, the, the supply that we have is essentially the same um, or lower and, and it, it's not keeping up with the demand. So prices are going up. I don't fully agree with this because we're also seeing raw cards market as strong as um, graded cards. So what I'm saying is but the entire market, it's not just graded cards, it's raw cards too are strong. We, For example, uh, these LeBron cards, right, um, that we've seen go up. I mentioned the LeBron rookie, but I, I'm talking about first year Laker jersey LeBron cards. Um, those raw right now are, are, are firm and are strong. Um, essentially, any newer basketball raw is strong. Um, so I get the point of that, but I don't fully agree with it just because I raws are the raws market, raw cards market aren't dead. Next one, guys. The Jordan documentary has brought back a lot of 80s and 90s youth into the hobby. I, I could see this happening. I think this is actually what is happening right now. A lot of these guys who grew up 80s, 90s, watch Jordan. Documentaries coming out. You know, they were into cards when they were younger. So they're actually getting back into cards. A, because coronavirus, nothing to do. But B, because they're, they're seeing this documentary come out. They're going through their old cards. And now they're going on eBay and, and buying, you know, their legends, their guys that they think, um, you know, were, were basically the guys they looked up to. So this does make a lot of sense for me personally. Um, and I, I honestly, that's a lot of what I think we're seeing. I mean, the Jordan documentary, all, all these, all the Bulls guys in that documentary, their card prices are up exponentially. Um, and also the guys in that era, those guys' cards are up as well. Um, so I do, I would agree with this. So the card market, can this card market basically is it sustainable? Well, it, it's, it's an interesting question, right? Um, if the market stays like this right now, only one could imagine what will happen when the NBA announces, hey, this is, or not even the NBA, let's say, what, what would happen, guys, 
when professional sports says, hey, this is the date we're starting, you know, June X, July X, there's going to be a big sort um, in card prices and, and jumps just from that. And then what's going to happen when professional sports are actually back? That's going to bring up the market an exponential percent again. So it's an interesting time to see the market at this point right now when there's no prof when there's literally no professional sports being played. Um, like economically, it doesn't make sense whatsoever. If unemployment is at an un unimaginable rate or the highest it's ever been, you know, if markets are down, um, usually the first thing that goes when a pandemic or, 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 you know, um, anything economically bad happens is, you know, your, your, your income that you spend on, on hobbies and stuff like that tends to go away. And that's usually the first thing that goes away. But we're not seeing this in the card market, which is, is again, economically, it's just weird. It's funky. It doesn't make technical sense, um, but it's happening. Um, so I guess the, then the question becomes, will the, will the card market ever be affected because of this pandemic? That all, that all comes down to how this transition, how this transition from, you know, where we're at right now to going back to normal life how quickly that transition occurs. Will this actually set us back into an, you know, uh, uh, essentially bad economic times? Um, if it does and it's at scale, then yes, I think it would affect the card market. Um, but if this transition just goes like, hey, like, you know, we're, we're quarantined right now, you know, we have a good transition in a month, sports are back, everything goes back to normal, then I think th the market's good to go. Um, and, and from what I can tell right now, um, again, I'm still a little flustered with why, with how the, how good the card market is, even though I'm not complaining, it's just interesting to me, um, where the card market is at. Um, but, um, if everything goes smoothly with this transition, then, you know, the market can't be affected. And also I want to point out, I think maybe one of the reasons what, or what we're seeing is the demand, so the demand we saw with people coming into the hobby, it looks like it's still staying the same as well. So there's still the same amount of people before the pandemic, right? Coming into the hobby as when we're in the pandemic right now, when we're in this quarantine right now, there's still that many people coming into the hobby. One might have thought that because of this, it would actually decrease the level of people coming in, but it's actually not. So that supply also is essentially um, Xing out um, this whole no sports being played, if you will. Um, so interesting times, definitely interesting times. We are seeing basically card prices and the market staying firm and actually getting really hot with no sports being played with other markets and downfalls. The sports card market is staying firm. It's staying strong. Uh, this this is honestly one of the craziest things I have seen. I don't know why people, more people aren't talking about this. Um, it is honestly a phenomenon, if you will. Uh, but this just goes to show where the sports card market is going. Sports cards are becoming an art. It's becoming, it's becoming something you literally stunt. Um, you have Supreme, like guys who have Supreme have shoes. No, this is this is cards now. This is what it's becoming. This is fashion. Um, so exciting times in the card market. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, please, please, please smash that like button. Please subscribe to the channel. It will mean a ton. If you're listening on Spotify, please follow me. It would also mean an extreme amount uh, to me. Um, you guys probably know me from my Instagram page at Sasha Tamanon. I also have a TikTok at Sasha Tamanon, which we just hit 6,000 followers. So I really appreciate it. Um, and I will see you guys next time. Stay safe, stay at home. I hope everybody's healthy.